All right, I believe everybody should be able to see the screen. Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is basically on the secure party creditor process that I have. And because a lot of people are asking me, well, what is in your process? Because I have an understanding of seeing so much fragmented information, pieces of the entire process that is just being uh, this propelled into this community and leaving everyone confused. Um, so we're, I'm going to do, a, we're going to do a quick video on exactly what's inside of this secure party creditor process. And so on the last video I did when I wrapped up the nationality, because my side of things when I started this was the nationality process. So I had, um, we've already did the meetings online. I've already got the process together. And those of you that was uh, around for that received the email with the webinar in it on the step-by-step -step uh, instructions for that as well as the templates that you use for that so congratulations to everyone that's already received their um, Department of State authentications um, that's great but the thing is that there's a confusing aspect to this word secure party creditor where the secure party is actually your nationality you have to be a secure party before you become a creditor okay so that is the confusing aspect to what we're talking about because what we've noticed is that a lot of people are intermingling with two processes when they're both supposed to flow into each other. Your nationality process, if it, exactly the way that I had um, formatted it, if you are, if you went by um, what the way I did mine, and it was step by step, that led you right and ended you up on a UCC 11 which is the only UCC that you should do first is to get that certified search on your name. And that UCC 11 is where I ended the nationality process because now it's time for you to get into the creditor side and the private banker side and learning what trust law is so that you can fully enforce your trust, fund your trust and operate in trust. So, um, I don't know a lot of you also we were doing the ones that are doing the nationality process if you don't have that process you can definitely email me Port Authority LLC at Gmail I can get that over to you if you're more advanced or if you need to cross-reference we also do consultations on this information we also do mentoring classes because just because you have this process does not mean that you know how to enforce this process you need to learn trust law you need to learn contract law. You need to learn tax law. You need to learn constitution. You need to learn uniform uh, commercial code. You need to learn security exchange commission. You need to learn your local, state, and federal municipalities and different jurisdictions and statutes and codes for your jurisdiction. So just because you have this process or you bought this process, and, and, and now that you have it, you have no idea what to do with it. And so we over here at Port Authority understand what is going on. And we're trying to make everything clear and concise so that there is no missing information so that you can go ahead and create your own country and again, be self-governing over yourself. But it's in order for you to be successful at that, you have to know how to enforce these laws that you are standing on. So just because you have a nationality or just because you are a secure creditor on paperwork and you can't defend these 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 rights that you that you submitted for then it is completely pointless so with that said i'm a, um let my husband come on here so you can run through this secure party uh folder that uh we have for you guys so so first we want to look at these videos to really understand and get an understanding of what a secure party and what a creditor is. And uh, once you watch these videos, these three videos, you'll basically get an idea where you stand. So all these documents that's in this folder are particular documents to help you on your journey in understanding how to operate as a secure party, i.e. creditor. So um, the first folder is the equity folder. We want to learn about equity and understanding what equity is and how equity position us in commerce. Um, here's some trust indentures. Here's some um, uh, uh, declaration of trust. Here's some uh, audio. 
And definitely equity is something that you would really want to understand because that's what that's what keeps us separated from their jurisdiction. It's understanding the law of equity. All right, moving along into freedom papers. These are just uh, random documents uh, dealing with the IRS, A for B. These are just footnotes to help you to understand how to enforce uh, being a secure party and a creditor. So these are just different documents, uh, common law trust, uh, comprehending estates. And these are just documents to uh, show you how to operate in commerce. IRS folder. These are the particular forms that you would need to begin to understand how tax law comes into place and how we're being taxed for everything. So once we understand how to use the tax form to enforce our status, that's when we can be uh, recognized as a secured party. So let me move along. And you only get that by organizing your trust. Yeah. Because you would be going into the private. And so that is where you would receive your tax exemption. So if you have not yet done that, then you have yet, you have not even uh, secured your party. Go ahead, Beth. I'm just going to try. Go, go ahead, because they <laughs> need to know. If you, had, if you haven't secured your party with the IRS, then that shit doesn't matter. They, anything you try to do, it really doesn't matter because you got to go through them because they're the one that's causing all of this. They're the one that's taxing you. They're doing business on your land. So moving along to keys. These are key um, documents that you would want to uh, look into. Uh, the DC, DTC rules and bylaws, settlements, um, Unicentral Convention, Rule 144A. These are just documents that you would want to uh, get familiarized with and um, we definitely have a law dictionary you have all the you have all the uh, blacks law dictionaries okay so yes we got all the blacks law the um Ballantyne, the uh, blacks law Bouvier Oxford yeah so you're getting a lot with this package like People are charging $5,000 for secure party process, and you're getting this for 200 So you're getting a lot they, of documents for 200 And the reason why we put this together is because they, I don't know what it is with this microwave generation where everybody wants things instantaneously, that they are paying these people the $3,000, $5,000 for them to do their secure party creditor process. And then, you know, which is ridiculous because of the fact that that's like calling up LegalZoom and getting them to do you a LLC. It's going to be the standard edition. When you're going into creating your own nation state, don't you think that it should be a bit personal? You're creating your own country. This comes with a coat of arms. This comes with a flag. This comes with a oath of office, your own constitution, your own bylaws. And also what you consider your territory, your jurisdictions, and the entry for for access to that. These are a lot of things that you should be thinking about while you're doing this, while you're having someone else do your paperwork. And on that, if you don't even if you, if you don't even understand trust law, then where are you getting your nationality should be the question. Who's giving it to you? Who is giving these documents to you? How are they procuring these documents? Are you then? being conveyed into their trust? Are they then usurping you as a creditor and you still not benefiting? This is the process, like this is where I'm at with it. I need to go ahead and address which side of the fence I am on because the way on the side of the fence I am on is I am not depending on a social security number or a social security account. So if your focus is to get into some TDA account or whichever way it follow down that credit path of using that SIN number, then, you know, by beyond, go ahead. But the process that we are walking you through is completely alienated to that. That is a foreign jurisdiction, in a sense. We are foreign, non-resident aliens. So we would not be co-mingling. And, and, you know, you know, not to mention, um, some of these processes are broken down. And over the two or three years I've been studying, Everything that's in this folder is everything that I've done. I've the the information I've come across, the words I've studied, the laws I've studied, things that I've studied myself. Um, 
and uh, other information people have um, uh, uh, conveyed to me. So moving through um, these documents, we have um, online PDFs. I mean, you're getting a plethora of information. This entire process is a 6.9 gig. Yeah, so just dealing with trust. And, and, and here we have trust indentures. We have um, uh, uh, trust documents on how to formulate your trust. We have templates in here. Trying to get this thing pulled up. Did you tell them about the videos um, before they even walk through that process? Because this process, it looks um, frightening just looking at it all, all the documents that you would have to go through and, and uh, be familiarized with. But the way I said in the beginning is that we have prepared this in a step-by-step -step while there are webinars attached to this. And most of the documents that you see are going to be templates. Now, the reason why I am pushing that you do your own process is because a lot of, like um, my husband was saying, processes change through time. Okay, so that means that wouldn't it make more sense for you to incorporate your own into your original um, drafted security agreements or private agreements and uh, make them conducive to what you want? I mean, ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're creating our own self-sufficient society. When you, when you when you decide to do the secure party process yourself, you understand and understand how to operate and you wouldn't need anybody this is teaching people to stand up and handle your responsibilities so okay we got um oh i definitely got some random notes in here we got a uh, uh, ucc financial statements if you need to um go over and see how to fill it out um i wanted to get into this the state codes and statutes now these documents i actually these these codes are codes that i actually put together over the course of my studies and um it's a lot of information in here just dealing with the different uh statues at large and the different codes that you would need to study oath of office actually as, as she was speaking let me see let me pull up okay U.S. Uh, Title 26, the uh, Eternal Reverend, uh, Revenue Code, you definitely need to get um, familiarized with that particular um, document. So you're getting a lot of information in this folder. You're getting templates. And in this secure party process, you're getting more templates and information just to bounce off of what you already compiled. So you're getting a plethora of information in this particular uh, folder. Like, like my wife said, it's 6.9 gigs. After you finish with this uh, folder, you'll be able to operate in commerce. You'll be able to understand how contracts work. You'll be able to understand contract law trust law or uh, tax law you'll be able to understand ucc code you'll be able to understand private and public code you'll be able to understand your position their position you'll be able to understand how to contract when you're dealing with these people so yeah that brings up edx.org is uh, we've been definitely promoting that um if you haven't heard edx.org allows you to go on and basically get a um illegal education well get a, a a certificate for a contract certificate. for contract yeah you can contracting get, class and they're also doing trust law classes as well from prestigious universities like harvard university for free at edx.org so um what we want to say is that also this is a secure party creditor after you have nationalized yourself, you've done your UCC 11, and now you're ready, you've already positioned yourself to be in full faith and full credit, so now you can move into being a creditor 
But this is a secure party process. There is a trust. Babe, come pull that part up. Because, you know, I don't know you, how your filings are. But there is a couple. Did you show them that? The, the trust folder? Yeah, Before okay. you even get, it's in here. Before you even get into figuring out all of this information, your focus primarily is on trust and understanding what types of trust there are, how to formulate the trust, what particular order you need to be positioned in that trust. And then understanding that you can have a trust as a management trust and you can have subsidiary trust operating under that management trust. So you got to understand how to create these particular vehicles to protect yourself and minimize uh, contact. In this folder right here, uh, Maximums of Equity, Time to Wake Up, there's some good literature in this folder right here to explain what it is you are doing because ultimately this is your baby. This trust is, is everything. Everything, all assets, everything is inside of this trust. And you would be orchestrating this trust depending on which kind of trust we're talking about here. So I can't really go into detail on that because there are multiple trusts that you would be creating. But this is where you need to start before you even get into wanting to know about the um, the commercial codes and wanting to know about uh, uh, banking and things of that nature. Because in this trust, you will realize that now you need special purple purpose vehicles. Okay, this trust is a special purpose vehicle, right? But you need yourself to be a special purpose vehicle. Now that you have declared your nationality, you are a secure party. The first step in that is a sole proprietor. You need a, a new uh, criteria for you to be doing commercial, public commercial affairs with, right? Because now you have said that, no, you are private. So now there are two of you. So until you have created two different, separate, severed identities is what you should be doing right after that nationality is severing the two, the debtor from the creditor meaning that the creditor in care of physical address, the debtor lives at the post office because it's a because of the fact that you need to keep your public and private separate, especially when dealing with trust. And not only that, after you separate the two, you let the creditor pull the debtor into the trust and you administrate any accounts from that debtor from the trust that you created okay. as the creditor. Right. And so, you know, you want to make sure that um, because you just want to make the trust is the most important. OK, because the secure creditor process is going to put you in a position to where you can create your own currency and you are in control of how you want to facilitate things in commerce. But if you if you don't have a trust and you're discharging and, and uh, charge and doing chargebacks and maybe. um trying to attempt to procure property or do land acquisitions. If you, if you are successful with that, but yet have no trust to put it in, then you don't get an eating 10.20. Not to mention that <laughs> we're dealing, we're in the age of identity theft. So Facts. to understand what a secure party is, is to understand that your identity is secure. All your, all your, uh, uh, all your work, all your assets is secured inside of a trust. Mm -hmm. And it's not out there in the seas of commerce and you're not being taxed and you're not being treated as a debtor. So mm -hmm. understanding that you have to secure your persons so that we won't uh, be, be pirated. Mm -hmm. You understand why the trust is, is, is uh, essential. Jurisdiction. It's essential. Mm -hmm. And so another thing besides just this particular trust that we are talking about as far as protection, everything else that is uh, that you do in life as far as getting married, you can have a marital trust because I've seen that a lot of people have asked because when they uh, secure, when they become a secure party creditor, they understand that all contracts are rescinded. So that means, yes, your marriage license was a contract through the state. It will be rescinded. But if you understand what a marital trust is, then you will understand that this is really where, where you want to be because this is where you get your most protection in, and it's an equity where both parties, regardless if it needs to be resolved or not, it's, it's, it's equitable. And each party can have remedy. 
So, and there are other trusts as far as business trusts, you know. And here's a template of different trusts that they would do, uh, that they definitely need to look into. Um, like she was talking about the marital trust is inside these documents, these templates. So you can definitely draft up, look at these documents, correspond them to the, uh, to your state. Because in your state, if you go to the law library, they already have standard trust indentures. So you want to always mirror everything you do with what is in this, uh, with the state deemed as acceptable. Yeah. So, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> so is there anything else you want to tell them about, babe? Well, that's pretty much it. Now, for y'all that um, are new to this, to this aspect of it, this is completely solely wrapped around what we have in our uh, secure party credit process. You know, if you've heard Tiffany Israel on Facebook, this is basically what I have in mind. This is what we are giving you that we ourselves have lived by. We've done these things. So we understand going by this process, we can tell where you're going to get certain obstacles. We already know we can foresee certain things. So the reason why I did this is because of the fact that there are so many people coming at me with fragmented information of fragmented information. Okay, if you're getting information from particular people and they're giving you a piece of it and you go to ask them where the other piece is and they don't know or they're whatever, more than likely they don't know. You need to cross-reference everything, you know, with everything that you do because this is not either, either you are keeping time or you're doing time. And if you're not creating your own nation state, then you are basically pulled into somebody else's country and idea. And therefore, it's pointless to me because I did not decide to become a sovereign and a self-governed country, well, nation state, to then join with another allegus and be drafted in under their government. So that completely is not what that we're about. That doesn't even benefit you. It doesn't. It they doesn't. Have some people say they, they signed up with uh, Washington Nation. They yes. did their paperwork. And, um, Two years later, they're like, why am I still working? That's a good question. Why are you still working? And then on top of that, he's not receiving his mail. He have, he, he's complaining that they're still in his mail. So right. we're dealing with identity theft all then, the way around yes, the Yes, we have people come tell us some of the craziest things. I heard a story about a lady went to court and appointed the judge to be the trustee over her uh, trust that she publicly filed at the courthouse. So you're telling me that you went to the Gentile court and told the judge, yes, you're my trustee, so now you really have jurisdiction over me? So that is because of fragmented information, and you right. have to understand that there is a duality to this. Well, and it's, depending upon your motive, is depending on, upon what type of remedy you receive. I know a lady that was doing 1099 OIDs, and she was getting people on close to a mill. And because she wasn't protected, they end up giving her 25 years fed time because she was going, she was mixing pri private with public. She was taking, she was taking private money and putting them in public bank accounts. And when she tried to co mingle, she co mingled and got herself, caught herself a federal case. So you understand now why your nationality, you need your nationality to secure you because you cannot attempt to be. Uh, uh, doing any kind of discharging, doing any t uh, 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 kind of uh, 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 using any of these particular accounts to discharge debt, and you don't even own it. It's not even. It's not even secure. You haven't even did a financial a, a financial statement. You haven't even put nobody on notice that you did a notice and claim on those accounts. Facts. You're supposed to do a notice and claim on those particular accounts from the probate office beneficial interest and then you're supposed to file on the ucc what you did in a probate because that's where all your property is being held is in probate right so when you realize all this and you realize that it is not the interest it's the principle it's always been the principality of the situation and so when you keep your eyes on the prize and stop uh looking at things that don't exist like these these uh lesser these lesser banks that people are that's built off interest. If you understand the value that you are literally worth your weight in gold, 
and that you understand that this that you're doing this process to be able to receive um, how should I say this authority to be able to orchestrate or how delegate to your, delegate your, your yeah delegate your account then you will see that all of these accounts were created from that original bond because there is no money it's only boils down to titles and bonds at the end of the day are you a creditor are you or are you, are you a debtor? Are you a debtor? But at this moment, you are currently both. So you need to understand the difference that creditors and debtors do not co-mingle. And so when you realize this on a personal note, then you will clearly see how important it is that you are both a debtor and a creditor until you absorb all the property and responsibility and have discharged and made the debtor cleansed of its sins. Then you can collapse that entity and become a full creditor. Yeah, because they, they got you acting double minded. Right. Yeah, you so have to you, be able to do debtor, duality. Yeah, yeah, when, you, yeah. When, you, when you're a debtor and credit, you're, you're double minded. So you're going to pick you gonna pick a side. You're going to either be a creditor and delegate to, to, to your debtor, or you're going to be a debtor. Doubly dead debtor. Yeah. And so. Um, and debtors have a, a certain type of demeanor to them. Like, they don't because they, they're like, constantly they just, just usurping. They're yeah, like, they, ah, they're like, energy vampire, like, wine for the hills. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you have to realize that you yourself is a debtor. So you got to sever your debtor thoughts from that debtor because of the saying, you know, they broke your people. Don't never let a broke, the broke, the broke nigga lead, lead you. you. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's just where you're going to have to see and then you're going to want to detach. So, that's why I said you have to start with severing yourself because just like my husband says, co-mingling does not mix. And this is, this is with yourself. You can't co-mingle with yourself. So let alone a complete stranger that is a debtor, that's a, that, that just does not work. And that's why I say even, even after you get to the fact of realizing that, now you got to come to the fact that you got to do this sovereignty on a physical and a spiritual account. Yeah, this thing is not only physical. This because, you know, as you'll see going through this process, there's a lot of footnotes because that's the particular matrix, the, the dimension that we are in, in this corporate big, uh, fiasco. So, um, babe, anything else you want to end? Because I want to go ahead and uh, let this record. Man, that, that should be it. I mean, they got six or nine gigs for 200. That's, right. that's early. Way to get your life. Right, that's